Hello everyone, my name is Naren and in this session I want to discuss about how to prepare for your system design interviews. Before starting that, I have a small message also. I know I was not active on YouTube uh, from a couple of months. I was not able to upload new videos. I was not able to reply to your messages on YouTube comment and also in LinkedIn. And I'm really sorry about that. And I'm really thankful for all the support. The reason why I was not active on YouTube is because I was looking for better opportunities not just in India, but outside India as well. And it took me a lot of time or it took me a while to finish off all of that. Unlike in India, the interview process outside India is a little bit, uh, it, it takes more time than expected. It took a couple of months actually, and it was a great experience. I think now I have a fair share of um, interview experiences. I think for this video, it is going to add a lot of value because I had so many programming interviews and I had so many system design interviews. Some of them were on-site, some of them were online. So I think I'm going to add all of the information which I actually learned and experienced in the interviews to this video. So I guess it will better help you guys. And um, so the results, okay? So I was able to secure um, couple of jobs outside India and uh, now I'm actually deciding which one to take up. Uh, if you guys are really interested in knowing how to get a job outside India and if you really want to, so please leave a comment. A lot of people used to text me asking how to prepare for system design interviews. Like I have 20 days to Amazon interview and 10 days to Microsoft. Can you please share me a couple of books and blogs where I can prepare and read and practice, etc. So in this video, I'm going to try to include all of the information and um, explain how to prepare before system design interview and how to tackle the system design interviews when you are actually at the interview. So before anything, first you need to understand why there is a system design interview, first of all. The answer to this question is this. Basically, there are so many points, but these are the three important points to remember why there is a system design interview. First, the interviewer is basically assessing your technical ability to lead a team. This is most likely the possible case, but not for all the roles. But um, there are possibilities that you might need to guide a couple of, uh, you know, juniors or colleagues on how to, you know, solve a problem and how to design a thing or how to implement something or what is the right decision or right choice to use what technology for what problem like that, right? So you need to have a technical ability to lead a team. Uh, it is more of technical, not on the people management skills. It's definitely on the technical side, okay? And the second thing is problem solving itself. And the third thing is your design skills. The important thing you need to also understand here is if you are like one to three years of experience, something around it, they are most likely that you will not have system design interviews uh, in your interviews. But if your experience is more than four years and you are trying to you are trying for a senior kind of role then most likely your interviews will have at least one round of system design interview so firstly there is no doubt that you cannot completely explain the system or product design in just 45 to 60 minutes of your interview time the reason being these systems takes a lot of software engineers and a lot of time. It takes a lot of years to develop them. Moreover, like data structures or algorithm questions, there is no one specific optimal or efficient solution to the given problem. In system design interviews, there are so many possible solutions to the given problem. And there are so many ways to implement them also. So we might have to make a lot of, uh, you know, wise decisions on why we are choosing this particular solutions over this and over the other one. 
So oftentimes the interviewers will have one solution in their mind. So many times if we don't give the exact answer, there could be possibility that there is a difference in opinion, but there's a way to tackle it. So you, the first tip is um, you need to treat them as your colleague or a friend to whom you are explaining why you are actually making a design decision or choice of why you are doing this way. So you need to kind of explain why you made this, that decision. So he knows exactly no, now you're tackling this particular problem and this is why you are actually making this decision and this decision will help uh, us to solve this problem. So now, how to prepare for system design interviews? This is not the thing which you actually do just before your system design interview, like a couple of weeks before the interview or one day before the interview. This is like a long-term work or take at least a couple of months before, at least a month before your interview, like at least 30 days before your interview. I would suggest keep this or make this as a practice, like skills development is very essential for any software engineer. So it is like a continuous process, wherein what is expected is that you need to familiarize yourself with um, everyday tools, which as a software engineer, which we use like databases, load balancer, asynchronous workers, distributed systems, or HDFS, Spark, etc. There's so many of them. It is expected for me to know how the systems work and how or how to use the systems in my projects. That is like a very high level thing. Like, you know how to use a DB, you know how to write a query in, um, in any RDBMS or anything like that. Or you know how to configure the load balancer, or you know how to use HDFS or Spark. But it is also expected you to learn the pros and cons of using these systems. So there is Flink and there is Spark, there is Kafka Streams, there is a lot of streaming technology. But you need to know what is the right time or the place where you need to use Spark, or where you need to use Kafka Streams or when you need to use Python-based salary distributed workers. So you need to have a complete understanding of when to use which system. This is not just about when and how to use the system. It is also expected you to learn the internal working of all of these systems. That way you know a lot of designs, right? Say, for example, if you know how the RDBMS works, you know exactly how databases are designed. You just, you don't need to go to the code or very in depth to understand how they work. You just need to know their design or its software architecture, uh, different components, how they interact with each other or different algorithms which, which is used in that system. So that way you kind of know the internal working of that system and when you actually use those systems in your project, you will have better or thorough understanding of what actually happens inside so you can make better decisions. Say, for example, if you know how HDFS work, it's Hadoop Distributed File System, right? And it is very cool concept. I mean, if you go and read it, there is a lot about name node, data node, and a lot of things happens. You need to understand the internals of HDFS, not just how to use it, okay? So I'll just give you one example, right? Uh, in my couple of months before, in one of my interview, I was asked to, you know, design just a service which basically, um, you know, saves the thumbnails for the image store. Or I was asked to basically to design a, a scalable distributed image store just that's a you know, storage system where you need to design it to store a lot of images and thumbnails so so you, you can um you can't just say uh, use amazon s3 so you need to basically design everything on your own like like you need to design amazon s3 itself something like that right so what i did was i kind of took a lot of software architecture patterns from hdfs or system design from HDFS, and I kind of use 
those design skills to build my own image store or um, distributed image store. So I think it, it did work well. I think the interviewer also agreed that um, this will work. So, so that way I also know that the design was kind of good, right? So, 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 so this is how you can leverage the existing systems design on building something new. So you need to, it's always better to understand how different systems work internally. So what next? Now you have read the internals of different systems and you know how they work. But when you answer, uh, but when you are answering in the interview, uh, there is a difference when you know theoretically and when you're answering and when you have actually worked on those kind of systems, when you answer, there is a lot of difference. Basically, like it's, it's, a, con it's, the, it's a confidence in which you answer. Um, that actually, um, the interviewer will definitely get to know whether you know just by theoretically or whether have you really worked on those kind of systems. So it is always advised to start, uh, you know, getting your hands dirtier uh, by working on a lot of these kind of distributed system. If not like a large distributed system, start with small distributed systems. There are different approaches to uh, tackle that problem, problem also. Say not everywhere, not every software engineer uh, will get a chance to work on really complicated systems at your company because I know how it works. Um, you might be just writing APIs, uh, you know, from four to six years and you have never really worked on distributed systems. So, so the first thing you need to do is you need to um, get your uh, you know, hands on uh, working on these kind of complex systems by first go to your manager or find a internal job transfer options if you have in your company inside and, and try to you know, understand uh, how it is to work uh, with a complex system or work for those kind of uh, complex projects and understand it. So you will actually have a better view or better understanding on how these complex systems work. Um, so if you are not able to uh, find uh, internal, uh, you know, project, complex project to work um, in your company, uh, there are other ways like, so you can always contribute to open source projects. There are a lot of Apache projects. Um, so where you can go and contribute uh, before you actually start contributing uh, or writing the code, you will need to definitely understand about the projects in and out. Um, and then, then only you can commit code to uh, those repository. And that's good because you are completely understanding one product and you are basically, you know, contributing to open source. And these contributions will be a very big plus points in your upcoming interviews or just mention these things that you are actually contributing the code to open source. So X project, um, project X or something, just to mention that in your resume, it is going to add a lot of, you know, brownie points to uh, your profile. What are the other ways you can actually develop your skills? So, so system design is not just designing something. Uh, it's also about, you need to consider a lot of things like you need to uh, make sure that your system is reliable, scalable, durable, and um, you also need to foresee a lot of problems uh, that system will develop or will have. Uh, or it, it, just just to give an example, is there any single point of failure, or is there any place where things might break at some different situations like that? So so you need to understand. Um, you, you need to get that. Uh, skill of uh, foreseeing the problems your system might uh, have in future. So to, to get that kind of skills, uh, it's not just straightforward. You need to have, um, you need to develop these skills by keep on designing a lot of systems. One way to do that is, so uh, you just need to, at your free time, you just need to start thinking more and more about how a system works and how, how if I were an engineer or if I were a, software architect for that system, how I would have designed. Say, for example, if you're 
simply if you're just browsing um, Instagram, just think about, okay, how would I implement it in, you know, Instagram to serve it to billions of people? Like how uh, maybe I would have designed the feed API or how I would have designed the notifications uh, services for Instagram. Um, think about it. Um, try your system design on a paper or on a board. It is always um, advised to practice it on paper and board because that's how you're going to um, answer in your system design interview. So you need to practice that as well. So do that and um, see if that works um, by validating with the actual designs. Say you can search how the notification service um, implemented in Instagram and see if your design is as good as the design of Instagram's uh, notification service. Um, I mean, definitely it will not be because uh, it will take a lot of time and effort to build that kind of services, but see if you can replicate um, something like that. So, so if you keep doing that in your free time, definitely you will eventually have all, all the skills you require for the system design. So now you have got all of the skills you need to attend the system design interview. Now you are at the interview. Now, what do you need to do first? Definitely greet him. That's there, right? So say hello, good morning, whatever. The next thing is you're gonna discuss something about your past experience, what you do, what not, and everything. And then the time comes for you to answer. So what is the first thing you need to do? The first thing is understanding the goal of the system. So suppose if you're asked to design a system, now what you need to do is, if you are already familiar with that system, then you will know definitely the goal of the system. The goal of the Uber is to book a cab, um, no matter where a uh, you know, person who books is, no matter where the cab is, seamlessly you need to, you know, uh, meet the supply and demand and get a cab assigned to a customer and billing service and everything. Basically, you know how Uber works and what are the features Uber supports. So you already know the goal of the system, but sometimes it might happen so that the system, what uh, you're supposed to design, you don't know exactly what that means. In that case, you need to make some assumption based on the question itself and bring a lot of clarification questions to the interviewer. Basically, it should clear all of your doubts about the goal of the system itself. And um, you need to basically ask questions and clear all of the doubts you have related to the goal of the system itself. A good clarification question will definitely help you to understand the scope of the design, okay? And then actually clarifies the expectation of the interviewers also, and then helps you to understand the bottlenecks in the system also. Like if you're asking too many questions, uh, don't think that, okay, interviewer will have a negative marks for that or something like that. That doesn't happen. The more questions you ask, it's always good. The good questions you ask, there is a, there are possibilities that the interviewer might think, okay, he's able to foresee a lot of uh, you know, different kind of uh, potential use cases or problems or whatnot. Basically your questions, if your questions are very good, it's always a plus point. Uh, don't be shy to ask questions because if you don't really understand the goal of the system, then your system design is not going to be that good because it's not going to cover all of the scenarios, all of the things which it really needed, okay? Now, what is the second step in system design interview you need to remember? So the second step is establishing the scope. Once you understand the goal of the system, now you need to establish the scope of the system to the interviewer. What that means is you need to basically explain the interviewer, what are the features you're going to support in the system? For example, now you might be planning to build a system which supports 1 million users. You need to basically mention that to the interviewer. 
or if you are going to support uh, the users from all over the world, they need to mention that. Uh, I mean, it's just an example I gave. Basically, these are the features you are going to add or incorporate in your system. So in the end of this step, you and your interviewer basically have an understanding of what are the features will be included in your system design. If your inter interviewer wants more features to be added or some features to be not be added, then he will basically update you. You just need to update your understanding or your system design to incorporate only those features. So what's next? In third step, basically design for scale. In this step, there are two things can happen or the interview can go in two different directions. Uh, the interviewer might tell you, okay, just design the system for all the features you just mentioned. Um, so just that. So basically, you start working on the system design. Um, and, and remember that I told you to keep talking, uh, basically, like, why you're choosing this, if the interviewer is also looking at um, what you're doing. I mean, otherwise, basically, you just need to work out the system and then basically you're going to explain it later or if he's very interactive maybe you can keep explaining why are you doing this that that etc so the other direction in which the interview might go is now the interviewer might ask you to build the system just for a couple of users say, say something like um, build uber only for thousand users now how you're going to build it Definitely the system will be very lightweight and very, you know, easy one, right? So you basically build it and then you basically explain it to the interviewer and he might have a lot of questions around it. He might ask you what are the, you know, single point of failures, what are the you know, scalable issues and et cetera, et cetera. Now he might ask you to scale the existing system to support maybe like 10,000 users. Now, the same system might won't work or might work. It depends on what kind of how you have built, basically. Or later, he might ask you to design or, you know, change the existing system to support maybe like one lakh users or one million users. You know, you, don't, you never know. So, so that's how the interview might go. In this step, the interviewer will keep on observing how you are basically, uh, how well you are basically identify the potential bottlenecks or potential scalable issue or potential places where your system might break completely. Um, and then how you are actually designing um, those services, how you are basically solving those services. And that's where you will be evaluated then basically when you scale the system to support a uh, high number of users, you will have to identify all the bottlenecks or you will have to carefully scale the system so there are no potential issues in your system. So the next step is end-to-end -end explanation of the system you have designed. So this could have either been happened earlier itself while you're designing on the fly if your interview took a different direction of progressive scaling solutions, then maybe you have already explained. If not, if you just finished your system design, you just need to start explaining what how your system functions. So there are different approaches there as well. Basically, you need to explain uh, from the user perspective, basically, if, if it is over, basically how uh, or what happens when a user um, tries to book a cab, basically start from that flow and then explain uh, how different services, the messages will flow or, or, the, or the data flows through different services and how a cab is booked for a customer. So that's one way to touch up on all the different uh, you know, scenarios. And then you can basically take up individual services where you need to basically prioritize what service is very important because you only have limited time uh, you can't just basically keep on explaining everything. So you need to uh, concentrate on the very important service in that system 
and also make sure that you should you pick a service which you are very confident on or if you have a lot of new ideas on uh, which where you can impress the interviewer pick that one first uh, and then start explaining uh, most likely the interviewer will ask a couple of you know uh, follow-up questions and then you start answering them um, just like that okay so this step is basically explaining the algorithms and data structure you basically use in your system um, so this is kind of optional it depends on what system you are building so there are some system where you don't really use a lot of algorithms and data structures basically but there are a couple of systems or some kind of systems where algorithms and data structures plays very important role or key role in those cases it is very important to mention what kind of algorithms and data structures you are actually um, using to help deliver this particular system say for example if i was asked to build a search engine of uh, anything basically right right so in that case there are a couple of algorithms which plays very important role um, you know something like inverted indexes and um, say suffix try or suffix array so these kind of uh, you know algorithms or data structures are very important are, are the key aspects for the system design so you need to definitely make sure that you are going to cover uh, what algorithms you are using it to optimize the system you are building because some algorithms and data structures will definitely optimize your system design and it basically helps you to scale even more to, to even more users. Um, so if you don't use an uh, efficient one, that could be a bad thing. So always know all the good algorithms are uh, you know different kind of data structures which will be handy for different kind of systems so these all the five steps you need to remember when you are at the interview okay so just remember these five points and go in order i think things will be fine so you just you definitely need to uh, work on the skills part of it that is not going to happen just the day before, uh, just a couple of days before. It is like an ongoing thing, or at least start from you know twenty to thirty days before. If you haven't uh, done a lot of uh, preparation of about system, how to do system design. Um, so it's definitely a long term thing. But if you really want to prepare, you just need to start a little early. So so that's the thing. Um, I think I have put together all of the important points on how to improve your skills and how to tackle the system design at the interview. Uh, if you think this video is helpful, do like and share it um, and do leave your comment uh, about uh, how you feel about this video and it will definitely help me to uh, improvise myself. I'm, I'm not perfect so I have my flaws and I'll definitely correct them and I will try to bring better videos for you guys. Um, thank you.